are you at all familiar uh, with The uh, Witcher? Ooh, The Witcher. What is that? The Witcher? <laughs> well, it's an upcoming uh, Netflix series. Created by magic. Roaming the continent. We don't want your kind here. No, no, no. It's a, it's a video game, right? Well, it uh, is a... People probably most uh, know it right now for being uh, a, a video game. Uh, but it's actually... Uh, it started out as a series of books in the 1980s by a, a Polish author. Get Andrew. Oh. That that's right, that's right. And then it wasn't until it kind of came to prominence. I mean, it was very popular in in, in Europe. Okay, and right. uh, in specific, specifically in Poland, which is where the, the author is originally from. Okay, but it kind of proliferated to uh, the states uh, with the introduction uh, of the video games. Okay, and like like the past several years, ever since like the early two thousands or no mid two thousands. Um, the, the games have just kind of grown in popularity, where now I think even the third one is considered to be one of the greatest games of all time. Yeah, there's three right now. Okay, I only knew about the one. Yeah. Well, yeah, but well, now, even though you don't want to play those games, there is a TV show right now. Okay. At least it's coming out coming relatively out soon. soon. Yeah. Yes, we're coming out soon. So why don't we take a look at that uh, trailer, and we can come back with our thoughts and how I think it might be the future uh, Game of Thrones. Or I can get well, it's the, got the get same the trailer logo. out. <laughs> True calamity upon us all. I think it's good that those witchers don't feel human emotion. <laughs> You know, because <laughs> that, 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 that makes <laughs> that makes the casting of Henry Cavill perfect. You know that's that's been the one thing that has really bothered me about with, uh, the, this show. Mm -hmm. And like when when they first announced it, is just the, the the casting of Henry Cavill. It you know look I'm we're both probably on, on the same page. I think he's been a uh, terrible Superman. Mm -hmm. um, and like you know when you think of that, that Superman as a character, he has so much emotion. Yes, <laughs> you know he's not a borderline sociopath, and he's not. <laughs> Incredibly selfish, and uh, you know the fact that y you have Henry Cavill playing a, a character like Geralt of Rivia, which you know for those who are kind of uh, unfamiliar with the character, with the, the property. Yeah, educate it, me. What's this character yeah. like? So, uh, the, the, the Witcher series it's a, it's, a, it's a series of fantasy novels and video games. Takes place in kind of like uh, uh, like it incorporates um, you know uh, the Polish mythology. Okay. And uh, you have this uh, organization who are called Witchers, mm -hmm. and their whole thing is is that they are basically monster hunters. Yeah, and they you know go around uh, the specific continent, which is like uh, unnamed, but like all controlled by all these different warring families and things, and they're okay. just there to um, just take out these monsters and save these villages where these families just are just squabbling amongst each other right now. Now so they have like do, no time. Do you for hire it. a Witcher, or does? A witcher just show up when it, you have a problem. Now, typically, you have to hire a witcher, but in the case of someone like uh, Geralt of Rivia, he finds himself kind of embroiled in these situations where, yeah, initially, initially he starts out like just going there to to make a quick buck, you mm -hmm. know. But he's, you know, he he, he has he has he has, a, he has a soft heart. Okay, and so he feels the need to help people out when a witcher just shouldn't obviously do that. Okay. And like that's kind of been the premise of the book like a, a lot Western of the games. Hero. He very similar to like a Western hero. Yeah, okay. like a, a white hat, but it's like, you know, he prefers to kind of stay completely neutral he's, at least most of the time. He's trying to be an, an anti-hero, but ultimately it, he goes like, "All right, I got to help these yeah, people." Exactly. Yeah, exactly. It, it just doesn't work out. Mm -hmm. And one just one of the things that have always appealed to me about the series is it, it's it's just kind of its its focus on its narrative mm -hmm. and how it really has been able to create this incredibly imaginative world. Uh, and like through, through over time, like developing, you know, characters and, uh, um, you know, kind of expanding upon the, like all these relationships that, he, that he's had throughout the course of not only the books and the games. Yeah. And that's just something that I think with, you know, Netflix going kind of uh, all in on this show is like, I think it can, it has the, the potential to possibly fill the void that was left by Game of Thrones. Hmm. And I am skeptical. Mm hmm. Because of the fact that, I mean, from the trailer, other than Henry Cavill, was there something that you particularly liked about it? Or uh, is it just not interesting right. whatsoever? Ah, uh, man. Okay. How do I say this? Because if there's people looking forward to it, mm -hmm. that's fine. I, I got no problem with that. And it yeah. doesn't, it's not like it looks bad. Mm -hmm. It's just that when it's compared to Game of Thrones, uh, Game of Thrones hooked me because, sure, it was kind of a, I guess, medievalish fantasy. Sure. 
but when it came down to it, it was really about people. Yeah. And about the politics and the backstabbing. Mm-hmm. And there was talk of dragons. And we could see them. Mm-hmm. But it was a long time before those things came in. Right, right, right. And yeah, even the Red Witch, those things, they happened, but they were few and far between. Whereas mm-hmm. here, when I'm looking at this trailer, yeah. it's just full on Dungeons and Dragons. And at least for me, there's less appeal for that. Sure. At least that's what they're 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 selling you. Yeah. Uh, like like I, what they're I, showcasing right like now. Like looking at this, I'm like, well, I could just as well be watching Canary Row. Or- yeah. Well, how about if I at least show you when the video game trailer is and what this series has like potential okay. to possibly right. be, because that that's the thing. I mean, that's what you know. I originally read like one of the uh, original books, like, and I think there's like four or possibly more at this point. And I, I enjoyed it, but really, it was through the uh, video games that I started to really just kind of become enamored with it. And uh, yeah, I think I over that, time, I it has that was potential. Popular. I didn't know there were three, yeah, um, you know, versions of it. Yeah, like the first one had come out like in the mid two thousands, and the second one uh, came out probably like twenty eleven. And the most recent one came out a few years ago, and it's considered to be kind of like one of the greatest games of all time, okay. uh, certainly on this generation of consoles. But yeah, just kind of give uh, people an idea of what the series could pot- potentially grow into. Uh, here's the trailer for uh, The Witcher Three. Once we were many, now we are few. Killers of the world's filth. She's returned. Gonna, uh, she'll give her what she deserves. It kind of helps that you know you have you know Tywin Lannister uh-huh. in your game, kind of creating that Game of Thrones connection, sure. and kind of kind of establishing you know the fact that, that yeah yes he hunts monsters and things and, and creatures and ghouls and everything, but you know that's where I think the 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 political intrigue comes in, where you kind of you find yourself wrapped up into a story. Gotcha. And the games kind of continue to go into that and create a, like a whole lot of interesting things. White wolf. At last, I come for her with the prophecy. So after seeing something like that, like that, was, uh, look, that looks like total fun to play. No, okay, but not something that you would could see yourself watching like a TV series or anything. Like that. I mean, maybe. Mm-hmm. You know, it all depends. Like, like the, all the action and the special effects. Sure, those those things are all cool. Mm-hmm. But you can't sustain a, a TV series without the actual good drama to go with it. No, I, I get you, and I kind of just uh, want to go into specifically, like probably like the five reasons why I think it it has the potential to be something like Game okay. of Thrones. You brought up the fantasy action, mm-hmm. um, and where kind of like you know how, how Game of Thrones established it, like it was through you know initially it's like through those kind of flashy trailers, yeah. showcasing the world, um, you know, uh, sh- showcasing uh, the violence, mm-hmm. and I think like with with The Witcher. Like, that's going to be something that they have to initially sell to audiences, like, right away, is just how, you know, violent, uh, you know, th- this kind of world and society is to generate any sort of interest. You know, I mean, it, and, you know, the, the whole series, well, both of the video games and the books, and I think potentially with the TV show, it's going to go into, like, all the massive wars that happen, the assassina- assassinations, the, the various monsters that, that, that Geralt fights. So I think... It has that potential to fill the void that Game of Thrones left because I think of like stuff like uh, Battle for the Wall and things, mm-hmm. you know, like when yeah. it, so then that fantasy element starts coming in there and like oh absolutely and look, and look like it, it, it's I always appreciate the political intrigue but I think that initially to get people interested in the show it's like showcasing some of the stuff like that which I think is what they've been doing mm-hmm. with some of the marketing right now. Mm-hmm. Um, and you know this is this is kind of point number two where I think it's appropriate and I mean look. When Game of Thrones first started, uh, you know, it, it, was, it was kind of heavy on the sex. Yes. You know, and yeah. that was uh, initially to get a lot of people uh, interested in it. And, you know, the video games have also, video games and the books have gone into that as well. I mean, Geralt of Rivia is the kind of guy who, <laughs> <laughs> is, he's, 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 a bit of, he's a bit of a ladies man, you know? Okay. And uh, I think that, you know, so, so often with a lot of the like, shows, whether it be Spartacus or Game of Thrones, it's, it's focusing mostly on, you know, women's bodies and things. Yeah. Well, I think it would be kind of interesting where it's like the focus is just on Geralt's body. Well, that's the thing. Uh, you know, I, I might not think much of him as an actor, but mm-hmm. women do get wet for Henry Cavill. Uh, yeah, that, 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 that's the thing. And it's like they, uh, all the time. they, they have been paying attention. Like, he doesn't have to say anything. <laughs> <laughs> and look, I think at this point, it's, it's funny because in a lot of the past trailers, he hasn't really said much. This is the most dialogue that he's been given, actually. Mm-hmm. And I mean, you have scenes like this specifically when he's like, they created that bathtub scene with his him in, in there relaxing. So he's always I, got that look on his face, like he's skeptical, like yeah. he's going, hmm. 
Mm. It's like, what, what's he mm. thinking about? It's like, oh, do I have a line? Oh, God, I, I hope I don't have a line. I hopefully they just focus on me in this bathtub right now. <laughs> I'll just look slightly mad. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> but, you know, aside from like all the the flashy stuff, uh-huh. you know, the, the flesh and the, and, and, the, and the torn flesh and everything, then you could start getting into the things that Game of Thrones, I think, was uh, so well known for, which is... A lot of the a lot of the political intrigue, you know. I mean, Geralt he spends most of his time just going around this continent slaying monsters. Yeah. But he always finds himself wrapped into these situations where he has to uh, confront these royal families who are either you know using these monsters for little political plays. It's like, okay, this monster destroyed this person's crop or, or livelihood. How can I get up a, a one on this guy then? Okay. And so it's like initially he just goes over the monster, but then later on he has to like help all, all these people and then you know in, inevitably find himself embroiled in like a conspiracy or something like that. And, and those are the kind of things that I think... Does he find himself in a situation where... He realized he got used by somebody, and what he's done has caused a problem for other people. Uh, and, typically, and yeah. Now he, he's like, ah, oh, shit. Now I, yeah, I, like he, I got to fix he, this. He has to now, like you know, solve the situation. Okay. And like those are the things that I, I find you know really interesting about the games. That's what keeps me invested in it for for you know for for so long. And like there's there are multiple organizations, uh, multiple societies and royal families who he he interacts with and you know ends up murdering and things you know and they, yeah. not not because he absolutely wants to but because it's just necessary to you know continue on and you know basically to to help himself and just help you know better the society that you know he just kind of finds himself wrapped into and that's what I really like about that another a- aspect of it and I think this one has kind of been less of a focus so much in in some of the books. Uh, but it has been a big focus in the video games is the kind of the societal and, and cultural conflicts. This is a world where, you know, humans rule it, you know, for the most part. Uh, but there humans are... rule. Yeah, yeah. Well, they, they, they absolutely do. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, unless, you know, you're, you happen to be an elf or a dwarf who are crazy. Oh, God damn it. See, now I hate it when he knocks that down too, and I'm doing it as well. But, you know, elves and dwarves and things in, in the society are kind of treated like second-class citizens. Okay. You know, they're, they're in ghettos. You know, they're used for slave labor. And again, it's like, you know, controlled by these various royal families. And so then Geralt has to kind of, you know, again, he, he doesn't want anything to do with it, but, you know, he, he, he has that soft heart. And so he feels obligated to help out a lot of these people. Okay. And like I think that's another aspect. Again, where Canary you can... Row, but go. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So maybe maybe I should watch Canary <laughs> Row instead. I think just the the kind of the, the the pop culture relevance of The Witcher right now. I mean, look, it's been. Uh, I mean, it's been. It had his books very popular in in Poland, in mm-hmm. Europe, and in mm-hmm. later North America. But really, it's been through these video games that it's kind of proliferated. Over the last, uh, you know, I'd, I'd say decade. It's interesting because while they're still struggling to get a video game movie right, yeah, maybe they could do it with a TV show. And, that, and that's that's been a big thing because, like, I look at uh, and I've talked about this on Eight Bit Crumbs before, where you've had video game adaptations where they just become TV series. Castlevania uh-huh. is probably the most uh, famous one. Yeah, you know, adapted the the third and uh, the third game, and then Castlevania Symphony of the Night. Uh, to to great success, and it's like I think that with a TV series with, with so many things, you have more time to kind of build Absolutely. upon this world and everything. And but the, they've been very very careful to say, well, this technically is not an adaptation of the video games. Oh, it's okay. a it's an adaptation of the of the books. Uh-huh. But I think over time, you're gonna start to see. Uh, a lot of elements from the games coming in there. I think it's just, just natural, especially when they don't when they run out of books to 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 later adapt. I well, I I read something from the showrunner today, and she said that she has enough material for seven seasons. Oh, really? Yeah, she said she didn't want to oh, wow. just just throw just put it all out there for the first season mm-hmm. or the first two, which have been greenlit. Yeah. So she's like, yeah, we're gonna we're gonna you know we're gonna space it out. We got mm-hmm. she's she's written. You know, planned out plenty of material. Okay, so that probably to the point when she's not even going to use the video games, possibly. Possibly, maybe even the books, because I know that they've they, they've had. I think there's like four main novels, but then there's like a tons of short stories, mm-hmm. and so you can just mine that for material and make that kind of sync up. Sure, sure. But I, I I do think that it. I mean, look, if you have seven, you know, uh, season worth of material, 
and you have this planned out, so maybe it'll be even better than Game of Thrones <laughs> to the point where they actually know well, hey, how this is going to end. Have it planned out. <laughs> that, that puts it a step ahead. Yeah, plan, so yeah, point number six. <laughs> uh, you know, the, the fact they have it planned out probably make it even uh, uh, better for people who you know want something to fill the void of Game of Thrones. But now you get, with Game of Thrones, people were, were rabid for those books before yeah. there was even a series, like, mm-hmm. you know, television series. How you know, the the Witcher books is that something a lot of people are into? I think so. I think because of the again the proliferation of the video games mm-hmm. in the last uh, uh, few people years, want to go back and read. people may go back and read them. The author, uh, it's funny enough, like he originally when he signed over the rights to the developer CD Projekt Red to make these video games, uh, he was like, "Hey, I'll, I'll take whatever." You know, yeah. I mean, I, I don't, I don't. Video games are, you know, the, the, I don't take them seriously or anything. They're not art or whatever. And then years later, after like The Witcher Three, it was one of the best selling games of the year. He's like, "Well, I want to renegotiate." Oh, of course, <laughs> <laughs> of course. But but I, I do. Do think that thanks to those games, that interest interest in these in these uh, in this properties has been reinvigorated, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and I think it just has that potential now to be at least be one of the shows that's coming out that can fill the void of Game of Thrones. Obviously, Amazon is having their their Lord of the Rings show, which uh, takes place during the Second Age, and right. where you know I mean that, that property I think is kind of in terms of the films has floundered recently uh-huh. because of stuff like the Hobbit trilogy. The Hobbits, yeah. But I mean if you're relying on, you know, the mythology, the stuff that uh, you know Tolkien wrote like stuff in like the the Second Age or the Silmarillion where you don't feel obligated to put that into a movie, mm-hmm. then I think having that in a long form type of TV series can could be a lot better. The same way with The Witcher. And where, I mean because there's the, the, always the talk of the, the the void that Game of Thrones left, mm-hmm. but does it have to be a medieval fantasy that's filling the void? I guess I'm, I just thought of it kind of like uh, you know aesthetically, you know, right. kind of filling that right. void. But I mean, in terms of just like the show to watch right now, I mean, there's there there, there is plenty on. Yeah, you know, I mean, but the, probably the most popular one, certainly one that I think we both really enjoy, has been uh, Watchmen. Watchmen, yeah. Which, which which again is not. Dealing with you know swords and sorcery and things, but it is dealing with those kind of cultural and, uh, and cultural conflicts, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. you know, and in a way that gets really surprised me. Like even that episode that dealt with uh, uh, the, the the Tulsa massacre or the oh, riot. Yeah. They call it the riot, but it's like you, yeah, right. You, I mean that that's no yeah. <laughs> no riot. Yeah. You know, there was like <laughs> there might as well have been genocide uh-huh. happening right before us. But mm-hmm. that that is an excellent point. But yeah, at the end of the day, I was just thinking aesthetically like a medieval show or a fantasy show that could potentially fill that void. Because I think about when Game of Thrones is on and CW had their own version called yeah. Rain, mm-hmm. which I don't know how popular that was. I, obviously, people just want a Game of Thrones type show. And um, <laughs> I don't know. I mean, after the, <laughs> after the way it, it went out, I'm surprised that people want that. You think they, so? They, they don't want a Game of Thrones show. They want Game of Thrones. They want somebody to come back and go like, all right. Here's the real ending. Well, here's, here's, the real here's, ending? here's the real last season. There is this this new show, which I'm like, okay, now, uh, you know, again, we kind of know what happens to the specific family, but having like read some of the history and things about them, uh, I can definitely see it kind of take off and to be its its own thing. It's called uh, uh, House of the Dragon, and it follows like the the 300 year reign of the Targaryen family, okay. the point when they first uh, conquer. Westeros, uh-huh. and until they finally fall, and it, it, you know, with with the Daenerys and the and the Mad King and things, yeah, and uh, you know, having read some of that material, having read like this this book, like it goes into the entire family history and how I mean how how they did so many amazing things for for Westeros and society and those people, then also the awful horrible things that they've done, mm-hmm. and so you can have like a season like dedicated to specific members of the family and, to, and just kind of like through the decades. Yeah. And so each one kind of acts as a standalone miniseries. Okay. And I think that has, you know, potential. It does. It does. And that's what they're doing now. That's what they're doing. Now. Okay. They, they recently right. greenlighted this one. They canceled the, the long night, greenlighted this one and, uh, uh, t- two series. And so okay. hopefully in the next right. few I'm years, a, I'm we're going to get with that. That yeah. sounds good. So probably the house of dragons instead of, uh, uh, the Witcher, yeah. at least right now. <laughs>